So group one was able to make significant gains. Meanwhile, look at group two. Look at this shit, guys. Now you see why it is so important to keep cortisol levels low both during and after your workout. Look at the difference in muscle growth from the group that kept cortisol low, as you can see, roughly a 20% increase in gains, and the group that kept cortisol high, right? A pussy amount of gains in type 1 muscle fibers and type 2 muscle fibers actually regressed. So they actually lost type 2, which are fast twitch muscle fibers. Anyway, what's going on guys? Megan here. Let's take a look at this quick study here. Let's pull out the scout. So they looked at two groups of people, right? One group was given a carbohydrate drink while they were working out, so an intra-workout drink. Nothing special about it, no special supplement, just carbs in order to keep cortisol low. And the other group was given a placebo, right? So, you know, basic shit. No one in any group had any idea what they were getting, right? They didn't know if they were getting the carbohydrate substance or the placebo. And they were put through a workout program. And the goal was to see if the spike in cortisol from training had any correlation with the amount of muscle growth they were put on after the 12 week training program. And it was 12 weeks, so it was actually fairly long compared to most studies, which are only eight weeks. Right, so group one was given a carbohydrate drink, right? Something that has some carbs, mainly to lower cortisol, because you guys know one of the main reasons why cortisol goes up during training is because of glucose demand, right? Your body releases cortisol to pretty much fuck things up, right? In order to generate glucose for energy. But if you already have carbohydrates in your system, you already have plenty of glucose, let's say you had a pre workout meal or you have an intra workout shake or drink or whatever, the cortisol spike from training is gonna be low, obviously, because there's no need for your body to try to break down your muscle tissue to release glucose. But if you're training fasted, or if you don't have enough glucose in your system, or if you're training for long periods of time, so let's say you're training high volume, high intensity, more than 30 minutes, um, especially full body, and your body is cranking out cortisol like crazy, well, this is a good study to show you exactly what happens long run. So anyway, group two, group one, carbohydrate drink, group two, placebo. And as you can guess, the results were shocking, right? On the left, you have the group that took the carbohydrate drink, and as you can see, cortisol only went up by a pussy amount, right? Only 7%, which is not even significant. So they're able to go through this brutal workout and only have a 7% increase in cortisol, which is amazing, right? Because remember, you do not want cortisol to be too elevated during training, else that's gonna interfere with testosterone, interfere with free testosterone, and it's gonna make it very hard for you to maximize uh, the results from that workout, right? Obviously, you're still gonna make gains, but you're gonna see soon, it's gonna be at a very, very, very slow pace. So as you can see here, group one, only a 7% spike in cortisol because they had glucose in their system while they were training, and group two had a 99%, right? So double, 100% increase in cortisol, right? Which is a nightmare for any of you guys out there who know a thing or two about endocrinology and the effects that cortisol has on muscle growth, right? Remember guys, cortisol increases protein breakdown, obviously, so your body can use the amino acids to make uh, glucose. Cortisol blunts the effects of testosterone, Cortisol blunts production of testosterone at the latex cells. Cortisol upregulates myostatin like crazy. In fact, it's one of the number one upregulators of myostatin. So you can already guess the detrimental effects that this had on the group that was given the placebo. And as you can see here, look at the muscle growth. Group one, keep in mind they measure type one and type two gains, right? So both slow twitch and fast twitch muscle fibers. And you have the standard, you know, 19 to 20% increase, which is a standard for most of these studies, right? So, the, so group one was able to make significant gains, mainly because they kept cortisol low. Meanwhile, look at group two. Look at this shit, guys. Barely any gains in type one muscle fibers, and they actually lost type two muscle fibers. And this is not shocking. Once again, if you guys know anything about what cortisol does to amino acid absorption, protein synthesis, protein breakdown, you name it, right? It just fucks everything up. Remember, the top two most anabolic hormones in the body are obviously insulin and testosterone. And what does cortisol do? Cortisol negates the effects of insulin and negates the effects of testosterone in addition to increasing myostatin. For those of you who are wondering, well, was cortisol mainly responsible for this? Absolutely, right? The difference in spike in cortisol was able to explain 74% of the variance. Let that sink in, guys. 74% of the variance in gains 
was explained by the changing cortisol, which is fucking ridiculous. If you know anything about statistics, if you can explain 74% of the variance in anything, you pretty much have your final answer, right? And it makes sense. Remember, guys, what is the number one predictor of muscle growth that we can actually examine on a molecular level? Well, we know number one is myostatin and phyllostatin. Number two is the androgen receptor, right? Those are the top two biggest predictors of how much muscle you can build on a molecular level, right? And what does cortisol do? Cortisol increases myostatin. And what about the androgen receptor? Cortisol competes with testosterone for both synthesis, right? They're made from the same precursors and action on the receptors. Testosterone production, right? Cortisol blocks testosterone production, even if you increase luteinizing hormone and gonadotropin releasing hormone. And number three, cortisol obviously competes with testosterone for, you know, for anabolic and catabolic effects. So it's no surprise that the change in cortisol alone was able to explain 74% of the variance, right? You got idiots out there claiming, oh, don't worry about your hormones. Don't worry about nonsense, guys. Stop taking advice from people who don't know a thing or two about physiology, endocrinology, and even genetics, right? Muscle growth is all about the transcription and translation of genes, which are obviously regulated by your hormones. But anyway, guys, now you see why it is so important to manage your nutrition correctly. That's why I beat a dead horse about nutrition time and time again, right? You could train as hard as you want, like this group here. You think they didn't train hard, right? You could train as hard as you want, follow the best program on the planet. If your nutrition is shit, including your nutrition timing, your gains are gonna take a back seat. Like I said, you're still gonna grow. Don't get me wrong. You're still gonna make progress as long as you obviously do the bare minimum, right? But it's gonna be at an extremely slow rate. Like this group here, they're still gonna build muscle eventually, but it's gonna take them a hell of a lot longer than this group right nutrition is key your hormones are key and like i always say nutrition is even more important than training and this is fact it's not an opinion this is pure science your nutrition is what decides how hard you train in the gym and it is also what decides how well you recover from training in addition to the amount of tissue that your body is actually able to synthesize it's all about nutrition. Training simply increases your body's sensitivity to those nutrients, to your nutrition, right? People think muscle building happens in the gym. No, it happens in the kitchen. The gym simply increases the stimulatory effect of nutritional muscle growth, all right? So moral of the story, keep cortisol low through any means necessary. You're never gonna reduce it to zero, obviously. In fact, you don't want it at zero because it has uh, important uses in the body, even, even protein breakdown is not entirely bad, but again, that's, a comp that's for a completely different video. Um, you don't want it completely, you don't want it at zero, right? But in fact, you're never going to get cortisol at zero. Uh, but you definitely want to minimize it if your goal is to maximize muscle growth. In this study, they simply use a carbohydrate drink, right? Nothing special. Uh, don't go out there and try to buy supplements or dextrose or whatever. You know, just basic ass carbs will do the trick, right? Try to have carbs, especially if your workout is gonna be long, if it's gonna be a full body workout or a high volume workout, and it's gonna last more than 20 to 30 minutes, it's gonna, it's gonna be very intense. You definitely wanna have some food in your system, and it doesn't hurt to have an intra workout um, carb drink, right? Anything, I, I don't care if you use Gatorade, I don't care if you put sugar in your protein shake, you know, something just to keep glucose levels elevated and cortisol levels low while you pumping iron right like i said don't overcomplicate this keep it simple any basic fast digesting carbohydrate source will do keep it simple keep it cheap anyway guys hope the video helps don't forget to join the reddit and i will use a lot of the questions on the reddit to plan future videos all right i'm out of here see you in the comment section all right guys don't forget to like or share the video subscribe and hit the bell and buy my hsp nucleus of a low training program it's the ultimate program for maximum muscle growth it includes full body workout splits bro splits push pull home workouts you name it also comes with a complete guide for macros nutrition fat loss muscle growth hormones including a meal plan it's pretty much all my 16 years of experience condensed into one fucking book you're also going to get free copies of any future edition. So visit team3dalpha.com and you can use the 40% off coupon code Nucleus of Lord. Or you could just buy the shit at full price. All right, guys, I'm out of here.